Hello. In this recording, I wish to talk about the second derivative test and the first derivative test. Which one is better? Which one is easier? In some situation, you can use either method. And in some other situations, uh, one method might be more preferable. And in terms of better, you know, what is better, right? It's better usually means simpler or easier. But there are cases that using second derivative test might, might be much easier. For example, um, this example here, right? Example number one, um, we have a function. This function is square root of x minus the fourth root of x. And our task is to just to find local maximum, local max or local min for this function, right? If, well, for either method, we need to find first order derivative anyway. So we're gonna start with finding first order derivative. And the first order derivative, we're going to take a square, take a you know, um, derivative one half, and so this is going to be square root of x, okay, and subtracting, and this is going to be a quarter, and uh, x raised to the power of one quarter minus one, okay. Then of course, then what's this, right? So we need to continue. So this one quarter minus one is really negative, uh, negative, negative three fourths, negative three quarters. What is a negative three quarters, right? If we write it in familiar form, and that's going to be the negative exponent. So it's going to go down to the, the denominator. So then become positive exponents. And this positive exponent, it turned out to be that it's going to be the, the fourth root of x raised to the power of three. Okay, there's a four in front of it. Okay, so we don't want to get that four. The two fours have mean different things, okay? They're not at the same level, okay. So now, if we are to use the first order derivative test, we will need to make, we will need to factor, make it into factored form. But we have root two and root four. We, we need to find critical numbers, and we also need to, um, know the increasing, decreasing. So we need to, to write the derivative into factored form. So by just, just to find the derivative, when we said the derivative equals to zero, right? when we said the derivative equal to zero, and we ended up solving this equation, how do we solve this equation? Right? So we set it equal to zero. Right, we set it equal to zero. How did we get this? Okay, remove that. And we set it equal to zero. So we're, we need to solve this equation. How do we solve this equation? It is obviously, oh, I'm gonna use this form. Okay, I'm gonna use this form. Same thing, same thing. I'm gonna use this letter form, but it turned out to be to make it into factor form is out, algebraically, it's pretty challenging. Uh, it can be done. It can be done, but it's gonna be time consuming. <clears throat> so in this case, we have to be ready to be flexible. We need to be ready to be flexible. Okay, so to solve this equation, instead of, instead of, making that a factored form, how about we just work on this, right? We just work on this. So if this is true, right? If this is true, and we're gonna, you know, subtracting one of the terms on either side, we're gonna get 
this piece equal to the other piece. Okay, and there's a two in the denominator, so we can reduce the two, so we multiply by two on both sides. So this is gone, so this will be left with two, right? We, you can even put the two here. Move the two here, multiply two on both sides. Multiply by four on both sides. So here we multiply, okay, multiply four on both sides. Okay, that's a pretty simple algebraic operation. Okay, and then what do we do? Well, we can take a fourth power. We can take a fourth power on both sides. When we take a fourth power on both sides, what do we get? When we take fourth power on both sides, of course we operate everything in the domain, the left-hand side would be, the denominator would be two to the power of four, right? And the denominator, the square root to the power of four, that's gonna be x squared. And the right-hand side, right? When we take the fourth power, we're gonna have only one over x raised to the power of three. If we flip both sides, if we flip both sides, okay, so what do we get? We flip both sides, so we have x squared on both sides. So this is two to the power of four, you can write 16 if you wish, equals to x raised to the power of three over one, okay? X raised to the power of three over one is x raised to the power of three, okay? No problem. And what are we gonna do? Because we operate this in a domain, domain doesn't include zero, so we can divide both sides. Okay. Uh, let's do this, okay? So what we can do is that we can bring this together. We, have, we can write x raised to the power of three. And then what do we do? We're gonna bring them to the same size. Okay, all of these are much easier to operate. Minus x squared over two to the power of four, that equals to zero. Factor, right, factor. So we get x squared multiply, well, x cannot be zero, right? If, since x cannot be zero, actually, let's do this. The domain says x cannot be zero. In fact, x has to be positive. Okay, for the derivative. Because x cannot be zero, so what we can do, we can divide by divide by x squared on both sides. If when we divide by x squared on both sides, we just have one over x to the raised to the power of four equals to x. So we already get a critical number. Okay, we get a critical number. So at this critical number, okay, critical number, this critical number is here, we found it, right? But if we want to know if this is a local max, local min, instead of going through first derivative test, we can use second derivative test because we already have a C. We already have a C. C is one over two to the power of four, right? What we can do, all we have to do is just find second order derivative and plug in. So the, the first condition is already satisfied, right? On both, we just have to determine that the second derivative, second derivative as C, whether it's positive or negative. So what we do next is that we're gonna take a derivative, we're gonna take a derivative of the first order derivative. Okay, so next we're gonna find second order derivative. Okay, from, from the first order derivative, right? First order derivative, of course, we can 
we can simplify this a little bit. In fact, we can use this form. We can use we can use any one of the forms, right? Um, wait, what am I doing here? There. Okay. So this piece we can write it as x raised to the power because we want to use the power rule. Okay, x raised to the power of a negative. Okay. And then we're gonna, oh wait, that's, sorry, that's, uh, that's the, um, that's, what am I doing here? Oh, never mind. This is the first order, first order derivative. I think I deleted some, some stuff on by accident. Okay, so our C is, C is one over, to the power of four. Okay. So now from next, we're going to find second derivative, second order derivative. I'm sorry. Okay. So we're going to find second order derivative. So we're going to take a derivative of the first order derivative. So now we use this form. So then we can use the power rule, right? So one half x raised to the power of negative half minus one. Oops, negative half minus one. Okay, let me make the font a little bit larger so you can see um, the operation better. Okay, minus quarter, okay, power rule again, x raised to the power of negative three quarters minus one. So we're operating on these exponents that are, that are fractions. Okay, so he, on this piece, we're gonna get half to the power of negative half minus one is negative three minus a quarter. Oh, wait, um, I missed a negative three quarters here. Okay, I missed a negative three quarter, my bad. Okay, so this piece will make a positive three over 16. Positive. Then X raised to the power of negative seven over four. Okay, because negative one is negative four over four, right? Now, we got the second order derivative. Once again, the second order derivative is hard to factor, but we don't need to factor it. All we have to do according to second derivative test, right? We already have, we already have the, uh, the derivative of the first order derivative at the c equals zero. We already have this. We already have this, right? We already have this. We just have to, okay, look. We already have this. We just have to substitute the same number to the second derivative, okay? The second derivative is that piece. And we're going to replace that, which is a C. We replace the X by the C. Replace X by the C. Replacing it by C. Okay, so this is the C and that's the C. So we're, we're using second derivative test. Okay, I hope you guys see that. Right? So it used very little of the factoring technique because the factoring is just, uh, just so much hustle. And then you just simplify this number. Okay, I think I missed something here. Ah, I missed second, I missed a negative half here. Sorry. Okay, I missed a negative half here. Okay, when differentiating that piece, I, I miss a negative half. So this is gonna be negative quarter 
Okay, so this is a negative quarter, my bad. So now it's okay. Now it, it works. Okay, let me double check. Please double check for me. And if you are puzzling about what am I doing there, yes, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I made mistakes. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm taking derivative of that piece. If you have a negative half coming out and minus one, a power minus one. And this piece, we have a negative three quarters. So here we have a negative here, positive here. And next, we just have to simplify this numerical quantity. When we try to simplify this numerical quantity, we can write two to the power of four as two to the power of a negative four. And the two to the power of negative four inside the parentheses, right? Same thing. Then we can multiply the exponents, right? We learned this rule, b raised to the power m, and then raised to the power of n equals to b raised to the power of m times n. We know that from algebra, right? So in this piece, and these two powers will multiply, right? And what we will get is a four, a negative, negative become positive and four divided by two, that's a two. So we ended up this piece, it become two to the power of six, two to the power of six multiplying. And this piece, Right, negative four times negative seven over four, negative four, negative four reduced. So we get two to the power of seven. You see, this is much more manageable. So we're simplifying this because all we have to, all we want to do, we have a second derivative test right in front of us is to know whether it's a positive or negative. Okay, I think we almost are there. So this is a negative quarter negative a quarter, right? Two to the power of six is two to the power, is two to the power of two is a four times, two to the power of six, that's the four times two to the, two to the power of two, two to the power of four. Okay, you can use numerical values if you want. Three over 16, and multiply two to the power seven, two to the power seven equals to two to the power four, multiply two to the power three. You probably get this done sooner than I, right? Two to the power four is 16, right? 16 and 16 reduced. So on our next step, and we should be able to tell the sign of the second order derivative evaluated at this point. So this is gonna be negative one, Right, and this piece is gonna be three times that guy. So three times eight, okay, two to the power of three is eight, right, it's eight. Two to the power of negative, two to the power of four is a 16. So obviously this is gonna be positive. We don't even need to know the value. So let's check the second derivative test, right? It's a critical number and the derivative is positive. Therefore, we can say F has, has a local, has a local minimum. Okay, has a local minimum at C, at C. C equals to, of course, we know that that's one over two to the power of four, which is two to the power of negative four, whichever form you like to use. And then we're gonna evaluate the function's value, right? So this is the where, this tells us the where, and let's find out the what, right? So we're gonna bring this number to the depth to the function. And that function is right here. All right, we just plug in, we just plug in. 
Okay, so we replace it by one over two to the power of four. Right, so we will know what value is it. And what do we end up with? One over 16 taken square root. That's going to be one quarter. Right, two to the power of four is 16. One, uh, two to the power of four is 16. Minus this piece is half. Half, right? And the final answer is negative quarter. So that's the local minimum. The local minimum, local minimum is what? It's f of one over two to the power of four equals to negative quarter. Okay, so this tells the where and that tells the what. Okay, local minimum. Okay, local minimum. Now, look back to the function and if we graph this function, of course we're done already. We found the local minimum. And if we graph this function, right, what do we see? The domain is not including zero, right? Um, and there's a critical number at zero though. Okay, so that's gonna be a local, uh, local minimum, local minimum. But here, let's see what we have. We have a zero to five. This is going to be negative one, and this is one. So that's the curve, right? So we have a local max, local max here, and the, let me change the scale a little bit. Wait, so maybe this is two, we see better. Okay. So the local minimum, which is right here, that's one over, okay, that's the local minimum. The point, the point is one over two to the power of four, uh, negative a quarter, negative a quarter. So I'm gonna plot this point, so you're gonna see where it is, right? So that point, Okay, so the red dot, which is local minimum, it's right there. Okay, and the other one, uh, which is local maximum, okay, because it's, it's an endpoint. Okay, that's usually pretty obvious because you would just, um, we have a smaller number, right, which is negative four. When we plug in the zero, so that's gonna be zero, zero, um, zero, zero naturally is higher than this number. So that's naturally is a local maximum. All right, so in this whole process, you can see once we have a critical number, sometimes using second derivative test is much easier. A lot of the questions can be used either method, okay? It's a matter of personal preference or if sometimes you, you need to find interval of increasing or decreasing, you already have those intervals, then, then, then you just use that, those results to determine local max, local min, applying first derivative test. But don't forget the convenience of using second derivative test. Sometimes it can be easier. It can be easier. Okay, so without further ado, and this is a short, um, short piece and thank you for watching.